People around the world report seeing something that scares them. Something actually pushed me from behind. And they say they've got the evidence to prove it on video. It did it again. In photographs. On audio tape. <laughs> Voices that seem to come out of nowhere. I mean, I can hear that. You can hear that. Does brand new state of the art technology finally give us answers? This is again another opportunity to scientifically prove your existence. Monster Quest investigates one of history's bloodiest crime scenes. Mrs. Borden had received 19 hits to her head. In what's been called the most haunted house in America. You gotta listen to this. I would consider them to be spirit voices. Witnesses around the world report seeing monsters. Are they real or imaginary? Science searches for answers on Monster Quest. More than a third of Americans believe in ghosts, that spirits of the long departed linger in the world of the living. I actually felt something brush between the lower parts of my leg. We heard footsteps right above us in the hallway in the kitchen. Out of the corner of my eye, I thought I saw something blue passing me. And all of a sudden, my legs, which were draped over the side of the bed here, just started picking up on their own. Many of these paranormal incidents have been caught on film or video. Did anybody move back and step on the wall? This man says an unseen hand moved his video camera in a haunted house. You can hear and see that there is something physically moving the camera, but it doesn't appear on the camera. I can see several anomalies. Uh, moving left to right, up and down. Right there. Hmm? Uh -huh. This man Look. says his camera filmed ghosts on a Civil War battlefield. Look. There's nobody down there no more. A television newscast reported this amateur video might have captured a paranormal apparition right in the middle of the Vatican Basilica. And right in front of the tomb here, it's all clear, and there'll be a ghost coming up. You heard correctly, he said ghost. And the strange blue figure has become known as the Blue Ghost of Parma after it was recorded on an Ohio gas station security camera and broadcast on national TV. Technology captured this evidence. Can science authenticate it as paranormal? Monster Quest gathered together the most compelling evidence out there to be analyzed by experts for clues to its authenticity. So this is the sofa on which Andrew was killed. But Monster Quest will also generate new evidence, investigating what may be one of the most haunted places in America, the Lizzie Borden House, using the highest resolution thermal camera in use today. Um, we're gonna have to aim for this. All evidence will be submitted for analysis in a search for proof of the paranormal. Can't make much of that. A paranormal eyewitness may in some cases simply report feeling the presence of a ghost. But in the rarest cases, the spirit is a full-blown apparition consisting of a misty human-shaped presence, visible one minute, then gone the next. One of the most striking paranormal apparitions ever captured was shot on a Civil War battlefield in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. We just couldn't believe what, what we had saw. We kind of figured it was paranormal. The Underwood family shot the video at a place called Triangular Field in the fall of 2001. There's another spark. You see what I'm What's saying? What's that? Looked like shadows or uh, something moving yeah. actually through the trees and, and on the field. No. Right there. Hmm? Uh-huh. Look. There's nobody there. They claim these are ghosts crossing the battlefield. Uh, yeah. They was actually moving in so many different directions. We just couldn't believe that we had, had captured this. 8,000 men died here over three days in 1863. 
their battered bodies littered the fields. I really believe that it was actually uh, soldiers and horses coming up the field actually for a battle. Michael Goldsworthy, a former police investigator, will use state-of-the-art software to enhance this footage. The Ocean Systems detective package actually clarifies video and brings out details that you normally wouldn't be able to see. And more detail could provide new clues to prove its authenticity. The search for proof of the paranormal will also utilize audio evidence. This is the voice of a ghost, according to this investigator. It was captured using a technique called electronic voice phenomenon, or EVP. There's answers to questions, there's um, voices that, of loved ones that you can identify with. Al Rauber has been investigating paranormal activity for 40 years. He says the EVP method is simple. Ask a question and record, and voices will fill the silence that follows. Uh, sounds that aren't audible you know, when you're doing the recording, but when you listen back to the recording, there's uh, voices. Critics say these voices may be coming from radio broadcasts or that people are imagining a voice amid white noise. But for those who believe, it's not imagination if it's on tape. My son died in 2004. He was 16 years old and hearing from him was the most amazing thing I've ever encountered. Debbie Caruso is a New York woman whose teenage son died in an accident in Mexico. Soon after, she tried using EVP to reach him. I was really excited to hear that we'd be able to speak to them and didn't believe it. She used a simple program already in her laptop computer. It takes time and training, and to, and, but after you record for a long time, the voices get louder and they get stronger and now anyone can hear them. My son Joey left me this message on his 20th birthday. It says, Ma, I love you. Trying to communicate with departed loved ones is nothing new. In the 19th century, seances run by mediums became a hugely popular way to try to reach the dead. But with the introduction of the camera, gathering tangible evidence of the paranormal now became a science. I mean, it's one thing for someone to start talking in a different voice or, or, or alleging that they're, they're channeling someone in, in that way, but it's quite another to see something tangible. Early paranormal photographs displayed everything from floating heads, shrouded figures, and even mediums exuding paranormal goo called ectoplasm. While most early ghost photos were fakes, this 1936 photograph of an apparition on a staircase in an English estate is still talked about today. The Brown Lady of Raynham Hall was arguably the most famous ghost photo ever. The house had a reputation for being haunted. And when it was developed, they had this sort of human shape. Taken over 70 years ago, this photo continues to cause controversy. People have checked out the negative, said it's on the negative, so whatever it was, they absolutely got a picture of it. They become legendary for being real pictures of ghosts, and that's all that ever happens. You really rarely read any technical detail on any of those photographs. But today, the technical detail needed to properly analyze paranormal evidence exists. Dave Manganelli is a paranormal investigator with nearly 30 years of experience. Ready, Al? Yeah. He and Al Rauber will lead the search for new evidence. That search will take place in Fall River, Massachusetts at the Lizzie Borden House. Location of the sensational double murders of Lizzie's parents, Andrew and Abby Borden. They are just some of the spirits witnesses say they've encountered here. The Borden case is really interesting because it was the crime of the century. Back in August of 1892. On the morning of August 4th, 1892, Abby Borden was upstairs in the guest bedroom. 
The killer entered and approached her from behind, carrying an axe, using it to strike her again and again, until she was dead. Downstairs, Andrew Borden had returned home and lay down to take a nap in the parlor. Someone approached the room, axe in hand. The first blow struck him in the head. He may have awoken to see his attacker, but it was too late. Again, the axe fell over and over. Lizzie was the prime suspect but was acquitted at a trial that mesmerized the nation. And now, more than a century later, there are regular reports of strange things happening in this house. There is a lot of voices, footsteps, sounds, objects moving, things like that. My first personal experience in the house here was not long after we had purchased it in June of 2004. I went to the basement and I walked off the bottom step and took a step forward into what felt like a walk-in freezer. I felt what felt like two fingers being run down my back. And I, I stopped dead in my tracks. It's possible Andrew and Abby Borden might still be lingering, looking for some kind of divine justice all these years later. For the investigation, the house will be rigged with seven video cameras, all feeding into one central location, recording activity all night into the pre-dawn hours. Al Rauba will record audio, looking for paranormal voices. And Dave Manganelli will shoot with a new state-of-the-art infrared camera, never before used in a paranormal investigation. The evidence collected throughout the evening might prove the existence of spirits in this house once and for all. Okay, stop it now. Whoa, maybe back up. Why would this be so dark? While paranormal investigators specifically try to prove the existence of ghosts, sometimes the most compelling evidence is captured by accident, by ordinary people shooting home video. Every now and then, every few years, some piece of footage makes the news, like the, the kid who captured something at the Vatican in Rome. This video was taken in 2006 inside St. Peter's Basilica, by a tourist from Vancouver. And it turned up in a Canadian newscast. Watch this vacation home video closely and carefully. Did you see it? And right in front of the tomb here, it's all clear, and there'll be a ghost coming up. You heard correctly, he said ghost. Kind of see where the feet is. It shows a strange robed figure hovering in the air. Kind of looks like his head. Videotape editor Shane DeBrasio examined the footage frame by frame. It's definitely clear in this frame if by the, the reflection of the light shows us that this jacket is being supported by a stick. There's a stick right there. Tour guides often drape coats or scarves on long sticks to keep themselves visible to their tour groups. So the famed Vatican ghost isn't a spirit at all, but just a marker in a crowded tourist destination. A gas station in Palmer, Ohio, was the location of another accidental ghost-like apparition caught on tape. It happened one night in 2007, appearing on video from one of the station's security cameras. I honestly thought it might be uh, a piece of uh, dirt or uh, when I first seen it. But others called the blue figure a ghost. See it coming? I have seen it actually flying into the camera system and stayed there for about 40 minutes and then moved from the standing position to the bottom of the screen. It moves up and down and left and right, but it doesn't have any type of set pattern to it. Mike Hamid, president of Automated Surveillance, installed the security cameras at the station in 2006. 
the cameras are infrared. Infrared technology allows the camera to see in pitch black conditions, which humans cannot see with the naked eye. Hamid will construct an experiment to see if he can manipulate the image to recreate the phenomenon himself. Oh, actually, the infrareds have begun to kick on. Why would there be ghosts at the site? Some have speculated that the station might be built on a Native American burial ground. But a town historian says no one has ever found one. And the records have shown that for 150 years prior to settlers coming, and that was in 1816 that the first settlers came, there were no Indians living in this area. They may have at one time. Most of them had been run out and run off and killed and, and the like. Could there be another explanation? Are those who see ghosts merely seeing what they want to see? Our sensory apparatus is certainly quite fallible and, uh, you know, quite readily influenced by what we believe, what we expect. Professor Michael Lyons has studied the psychology behind paranormal beliefs. I think some people just are looking for answers and um, other outlets in our society may not as readily provide those kinds of answers. Uh, people who are more anxious tend to believe in the paranormal. Uh, people who are more afraid of dying. Another trait associated with belief in the paranormal is intolerance of ambiguity. That is, people who need answers more are more likely to be the people who believe in the, the paranormal. At the Borden House in Massachusetts, the search for new evidence is beginning. Al Rauber and Dave Manganelli arrive early to prepare for the night ahead. Paranormal activity has been reported throughout the house. In the basement, on the second floor, and more recently on the third floor, in the maid's room, and down the hall in the chimney room where a caretaker lived in the 1990s. Recently, there's been a surge of activity in that room. The first time I could actually feel an unseen hand on me, that's when it was enough for me. Tim Weisberg had his very first physical encounter with a haunting spirit in the chimney room. My legs, which were draped over the side of the bed here, just started picking up on their own, and I could feel the hands enveloping around my ankles, and that's when I said, okay, wait a minute, that's not, you know, the wind, that's not anything else, that's definitely, you know, something picking it up and pulling. In August 2007, Matt Moniz and his ghost hunting group were videotaping in the same room when one of their cameras moved by itself. The camera turned at roughly a 45 degree angle. Now when this happened, I thought maybe somebody had kicked the wiring to the, to the camera. She reset the camera back to its original position. She physically watched and heard the camera pick up and turn, focus directly back at her with nobody else near it. It did it again. It just I heard that this it. time. I heard it. I was right here. Wow. I heard it. Manganelli will spend some time exploring the chimney room with the FLIR thermal camera. It is the highest resolution handheld infrared thermal camera ever made. All right, so this is the sofa on which Andrew was killed. The camera is normally used by industry and the military to see heat energy invisible to the human eye. We can't see it in the infrared, but the camera can. So if it's giving off heat, the camera will spot it. Now that can't be no well, it's nothing paranormal. Robert Matting heads training for FLIR Systems, manufacturer of the camera. This model, the most sensitive of the FLIR cameras, is being used for the first time ever in a paranormal investigation. So for people that believe that ghosts have substance, and if that substance has a temperature to it, then the camera has a possibility of picking it up. People report being touched. People report hearing voices that they can't trace a source to. And then, of course, seeing things, which is the most rare. According to accounts, Lizzie Borden's murdered parents are not the only ghosts here. It's believed that the third floor is haunted by the spirits of two children. 
Town history reveals that in 1848, in the house next door, another double murder took place in another Borden family. The mother of that family killed her two young children in the basement of the house. They were drowned in a cistern on the Borden property, and today they're believed to possibly be haunting this house on occasion. Another spirit that seems to be inhabiting our third floor is that of Michael. Uh, Michael was a former caretaker of the house, and he worked for the former owner. And not long after he moved out, it's said that he died in a fire out in Connecticut. He fell asleep smoking. So five violent deaths. Are there five souls haunting this house? Can paranormal investigators Al Rauber and Dave Manganelli get the evidence to prove it? Uh, you gotta listen to this. I, I, you tell me what it's saying. The Lizzie Borden house has been a hotbed of paranormal activity ever since Lizzie's parents were murdered there. The investigation for new evidence is targeting several key areas in the building. In the basement, on the second floor, where the family's main bedrooms are located, and on the third floor, the chimney room where a caretaker lived, and in the maid's room down the hall. Well, this is Bridget Sullivan's room, the Borden's maid at the time of the murder. And I had an incident one night. I was alone in the house. I came up here to sleep. And when I woke up in the morning, the first thing I noticed was that the little rocking chair that sits to the left of Bridget's bed here had moved around to here and was facing me like somebody was watching me sleep. The Borden residence is unusual in that all the rooms on the second floor are connected without a central hallway. So Andrew Borden's room leads directly into his daughter Lizzie's room. Well, certainly since this is the Lizzie Borden house, I'd like to put a camera in here and keep an eye on things as we investigate. Okay. Outside Lizzie's room is the John Morse room, named after Abby Borden's brother. This is uh, also the room where Mrs. Borden's body was discovered. And Mrs. Borden received 19 hits with what was believed to be a hatchet. Ouch. And, and where was that body exactly? Her body was found right here between the bed and the dresser. Al Rauber plans a variety of experiments. First, he'll use two recorders in an attempt to hear voices of the dead that are said to haunt this house. The recorders are very basic models, and that's on purpose. More sophisticated recording devices, uh, the way the microphone is built, it has too many filters in it. It filters out a lot of the voices before they come in. The finer does the design, the less it's going to allow outside of the box types of stuff getting into it. Tom Owen is a voice recognition expert. He was the first to authenticate Osama bin Laden's voice when a recording surfaced in 2002. Owen is an EVP skeptic. The bottom line is uh, I, I only make of it what I can prove scientifically. Owen will be analyzing any EVP voices Al Robert is able to record. If somebody brings me a recording and I can run the multi-speech test and the oral and visual cues appear, then I can state with some certainty that that's the recording of a human voice. Whether it's from the other side or not, you know, it really doesn't matter. It either is a recording, in my opinion, of a human voice, or it's not. Robert also wants to look for electromagnetic fields. Remember, for these things to manifest, they, they need energy. Monitoring temperature will be important as well. Those who've seen ghosts here sometimes feel a sharp drop in temperature. I have some remote thermistors, uh, temperature sensing devices. I'll set three up in one room. The other room that people claim is always uh, very cold is the Morse room, where Abby was murdered. Dave Manganelli is in charge of gathering video footage. Second tape of the He's got two roving cameras and lockdown cameras in four locations. The maid's room, Lizzie's room, 
the Morse room where Abby Borden's body was found, and the basement. Those cameras feed their signals to a control room set up in the Borden dining room. From there, Ralber and Manganelli can monitor everything that's going on. Back at the gas station in Parma, Ohio, the investigation of the blue figure captured on an infrared security camera continues. Security camera expert Mike Hamid now has a strategy. This video is unique simply because it's like nothing I've ever seen before. We would probably want to walk up to the camera and dangle perhaps small items in front of the camera in order to see if we can get those infrared beams to reflect and see if we can get transparency through an, through an object. Hamid speculates that a bug may have created the blue ghost image. We've got three different bugs at three different sizes and we've got some different colors to try out. So we're going to use these tweezers to hold these bugs as close to the lens as possible. Hamid climbs 15 feet to reach the camera. Its infrared technology helps it see at night. But when the plastic bugs are placed on the lens, no matter what color they are, they all read blue on the monitor. It's right on the lens. But what Hamid was not able to duplicate was the fluid movements and the transparency of the original blue figure. We tried all three of these right in front of the lens, and this one right here came closest to duplicating your ghost. But at the same time, it was not an exact copy or an exact match, so it's still an unexplained mystery. At the Borden house, Dave Manganelli sets up an experiment in the maid's room on the third floor. So, in this room, we had our story of the chair that moved on its own. So I think I'm going to elect to use this camera, tether it to the laptop so I can see some of the video output, focus it on the chair, and uh, let it run for a while. All right, so the camera's on and the program has recognized it. So I'll just pull up a little video preview window. I'm just going to put a couple of markers that fall right under the, right where the slats of the base are here. And we can check that later on and see if anything has moved at all. And we'll just let this run unattended for a while. Robert and Manganelli are monitoring all the areas where witnesses have reported paranormal activity. It's nearly 11 p.m., but the night has just begun. Okay, you gotta hear this. Eleven thirty p.m. at the Lizzie Borden House in Fall River, Massachusetts. Al Rauber is recording for Paranormal Voices. I'm gonna just do a walk through of the house, room to room, where the activities seem to be uh, more often occurring. Into Lizzie's room, I believe we do get some voices in this room. If anybody is in this room, this is again another opportunity to scientifically prove your existence. Now coming down the hallway to the chimney room, we've had many reports of things happening in this particular room. If anyone is in this room, if the gentleman that they refer to as Michael, if you are still here, please leave us a message on this tape recorder. You know how to do it, you can do it. The chimney room was where Matt Moniz and his ghost hunting group witnessed one of their cameras moving on its own. Al Rauber and Dave Manganelli sat down to analyze the video themselves. So it's and not. There's a few number of people in the room. Yeah, there's a good number of people in the room, so it's not unattended. There it is. Okay, camera moves. Okay, so someone is at the camera. All right. And they're resetting it. I'm trying to reset it. Is that good? Yeah, so there's a wire on the camera. <laughs> There it goes again. It did it again. I just what? said that. It just I heard that. I heard it. I was right here. I heard it. I mean, both times it moved, there was a lot of people in the room. Do we want to put a camera in the exact same spot and make sure it's anchored? We can try that, sure. So this is our corner where we had the report of the camera moving on its own. So in the back of it pivots pretty easily. 
right? I'm reasonably confident if we don't stomp out of the room that the camera will stay there. Midnight. Robert takes down the temperature of the two rooms located on the second floor every 10 to 15 minutes. Nothing unusual yet. Dave Manganelli returns to the room where the rocking chair moved. But our chair hasn't moved. Still right on the tape marks. 1 a.m. Okay, you gotta hear this. Downstairs at the main control area, Robert is analyzing the first EVPs of the night. As soon as I say the word message, you hear, sure. Is this a message? Is this a message? Ready? Is this a message? The EVP was taken in the chimney room. Is this a message? I don't think anybody up there was saying that. The chimney room seems to be providing the best evidence for analysis so far. Is this a message? The cameras are continuing to roll throughout the house, including in Lizzie's room. Robert believes an audio recording session could pick up the voice of Lizzie Borden herself. 2 a.m. To make sure no extraneous sounds are picked up, the entire MonsterQuest team and owner Leanne Wilbur are gathered in Lizzie Borden's room. Robert will record on his two separate audio devices. We're in the Lizzie Borden room of the Lizzie Borden house. So this is the actual bedroom where Lizzie, not only did she sleep here, but we even still have some of her possessions in this room in a locked cabinet. Rauber begins the questioning. Lizzie, why did you kill your father? Lizzie, who made the mirror move? The mirror right behind me. During Rauber's last visit to the Borden house, a mirror in the hutch behind him moved when he asked a question about Abby Borden. Yeah. Rauber will analyze the recording in the main control room. 3 a.m. Dave Manganelli reviews footage from the chimney room. This is a review of the first tape that we did in the chimney room to test and see if the camera would move. So we'll just take a quick look. Okay, 10 or 11 minutes in, it hasn't moved. Almost 20 minutes in, same framing. So no movement there. Again, just kind of spot checking to see if anything unusual happened. And 50 minutes in, we haven't moved, people re-entering the room. So, nothing. Good solid picture. Manganelli now decides to shoot with a flare thermal camera, which can see heat energy normally invisible to the human eye, including temperature shifts as small as six hundredths of a degree. With a really good infrared camera like this one, we can actually see some interesting images. And back in the chimney room, there is something very odd and unexplainable. And there's the chest on which the other group's camera supposedly moved. The bottom of the toy chest appears to be glowing as if it were blazing hot. Yeah, definitely warmer at the bottom. I'd like to go uh, see if it's as warm as it looks. The top of the toy chest appears to be much cooler than the bottom. Yeah, it certainly doesn't feel particularly warm, but interesting. The top is definitely cooler, so the object itself, so the top of that is, it does have its cool spots. The footage of the chest will be marked for special analysis. As the Borden House investigators review their evidence, Michael Goldsworthy has completed his work on the existing evidence of the alleged Gettysburg ghosts. It shows faint white figures moving from left to right, from the ground, then higher up into the trees. It was shot in 2001 by the Underwood family at Triangular Field in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Right there. 
See? Uh huh. Look. There's nobody there. Where? I can't see. To enhance and study the video, Goldsworthy used software called Detective. And then we just tell the computer to average up to 100 frames, sharpen it a little bit, and you'll see that it straightens out the picture quite well. So we've gone from a very fuzzy, sparkly type picture that doesn't give a lot of detail to this, where now you can make this rock out much better. So then once it's been enhanced, and you can see right here, the image basically moves across. Could the figures just be other tourists on the field? Now, I do admit there were people behind us, that people just walking around enjoying Gettysburg just like we do, but uh, as far as in front of us, there was nobody there. This is the field as it looks today. In the direction the Underwoods were shooting, it is relatively flat. Yet the figures in their video seem elevated, well above the ground. For Goldsworthy, the repetition of the figures themselves was a bigger concern. So you have something in the picture, some object, that's moving across the image, and it actually does it several times. So what I did is combine three different shots from different times in the video to show what I then began picking up as a repetitive nature. He doubts this existing evidence is a paranormal apparition caught on tape. Because of the almost perfect repetition, it's almost as if someone is looping either a video or a projection. As far as creating this, if you were to do this in the field, I would say that you would use a clear piece of Lexan, a clear piece of glass, and reflect an image off of it. But Tom Underwood stands by its authenticity. And if I did all of this in front of everybody, I mean, I think I would have drew a lot of attention and I think they would have came over and tried to figure out what I was doing. It is the real thing. The Borden House investigation has produced nearly 50 hours of new evidence from seven cameras. Next, each tape will be examined in real time, watching and listening for any paranormal activity. We're panning around. There's a per whoa, what was that? Can you back that up? Are there spirits of the dead among us? And does this audio and video evidence prove it? This family says they watched ghosts crossing the Civil War battlefield. Looked like shadows or uh, something moving actually through the trees and, and on the field. This man says something unseen moved his camera in the Lizzie Borton house. It did it again. The camera turned at roughly a 45 degree angle. Of the existing evidence, our investigation showed the Vatican ghost was not a ghost at all but a jacket or scarf suspended by a long stick. This blue apparition might have been a bug, but Mike Hammond could not be sure. And this expert was skeptical of the Gettysburg ghosts, but could not rule out the paranormal. It is the real thing. And it's, it's, not, it's not a hoax or anything. As for the new evidence, more than 50 hours of video from the Lizzie Borden house have now been analyzed by the Monster Quest investigators. Cameras were locked down in the basement, in Lizzie Borden's room, in the room next door where her stepmother was killed, in the maid's room where the chair moved, and in the room where the camera was once reported to have moved by itself. The hours passed, the tape rolled on, but nothing out of the ordinary seemed to happen. The conventional cameras saw nothing abnormal. But the FLIR camera did pick up unusual activity. It sees heat energy and shifts in temperature, invisible to the naked eye. Yellow represents a higher temperature, while darker colors represent cold. Here's the toy chest again. And if we can stop right about there, this is the investigation footage that showed that the bottom of the chest was glowing and hot, 
but the floor beneath it was cold to the touch. Thermal camera expert Robert Madding analyzed this footage. We're seeing this little seam at the bottom which has a brass plate or strip across here, so not quite sure what that is. Could be reflection of uh, heat from people that are standing in the background. Not quite sure what that is. It remains a mystery. Next up, the maid's room, where there was a report of the moving rocking chair. Okay, stop it now. Whoa, maybe back up. And why would this be so dark? One might want to take a look at, uh, is, this, is there missing insulation here or some other thermal problem because this wall is so much darker than this one. It may simply be a construction defect. So while the video evidence was inconclusive, there was a lot more going on with the audio evidence. We captured a lot of voices. We caught EVP in four of the rooms, the, uh, the basement, Lizzie Borden's room, um, we caught it in the chimney room, and we also caught voices, I also caught voices in the Morse room. Now coming down the hallway to the chimney room. At one point in the chimney room, I was asking the spirit that we were told resides there if he would talk to us or give us some information, and a voice comes on saying, sure. Give us a message. Give us a message. Voice recognition expert Tom Owen analyzed the audio evidence. Let's see what it looks like. Can't make much of that. We're just saying total noise. Let me see what the... Yeah. Pitches. There's no pitch to it at all. While this clip is not providing Owen enough data to analyze fully, there's another EVP that is. This one captured in the Lizzie Borden room. And when we finished our taping session, I mean, we pretty much had signed off, and there's uh, uh, some small talk going on, and a voice comes on the tape. It's very close to the tape recorder, and the voice is saying, "So." Just the tape recorder. Yeah, there's definitely something there, right here. When you whisper. You're not uh, moving your vocal cords, and therefore you're not creating any fundamental frequency. And the first thing you'd want to do is to investigate who was on the site, because it, it, it is audible. I mean, I can hear that. You can hear that. And the voice seems to be extremely close to the microphone. But the surveillance camera in the room shows no one is close to it. Anybody that was in the room was at least three to five feet away from the microphone. This works on the, pro the uh, proposition of the inverse square law, you know, which means it's, it's a fancy way of saying that for every double the distance you move away from the source, you lose 6 dB. So if you're upright against the source and you're whispering, which you would, to be recorded in the first place, you would have to be close. And this sounds like it was close. The surveillance camera microphone also picked up the voice. But eerily, the voice sounds extremely close to the camera microphone too even though the camera was 10 feet away from the audio recorder. You know, it's obviously a sound. I mean, it's audible and it's, it's, you can hear that it's a sound. Whether it's from the other side, I don't know. It may only be one word, but the investigation could not eliminate the possibility that this was the voice of a ghost. I'm pretty convinced that 90% of the voices that we caught, um, I would consider them to be spirit voices or of a spiritual origin. It may not be proof beyond a shadow of a doubt, but something strange was happening in the Borden house. And is happening in places all over the world every day. And as recording technology improves, and with it the quality of the evidence, definitive proof of the existence of spirits among us may be closer than we think.